What we need to know is that Nikola Jokic is almost certainly going to win MVP as long as he stays healthy. A three-peat is sitting there for him, and the guy just keeps getting better every year. And Denver isn't first in the West. I think it's actually undisputed that he's the best player in the world now. He's giving you 25, 11, and 10 on 63% shooting, and he has the number one seed in the Western Conference. Here's Embiid, wants to take Jokic. Step back three. The MVP race is over. I have a vote. I'm voting for Joel Embiid. He's the MVP. He's good. I mean, give him the award. Are we looking at Jokic as a top five player in the game? A lot of people don't just because he hadn't had success once we got to the postseason. MVP races in the NBA have always been filled with mayhem. Compared to other pro sports like football and baseball, the level of chaos that arises from yearly NBA MVP debates is unparalleled. The 2023 race was a prime example of this. Headlined by Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic, this race was extremely close all the way to the end, with the victor being none other than the process himself. When the news was announced on social media, Sixers fans rejoiced, Nuggets fans screamed in agony, while Bucks fans said, it's okay, this is just another step toward success. What was unique about this race in particular was how in the matter of just two weeks, the betting favorite switched from Nikola Jokic to Joel Embiid and never looked back. With this came jubilation, but also skepticism. Were there other off-the-court factors that came into play? Sure, it's easy to just chalk up Embiid's MVP as a sympathy award. But how true is that? And what does a sympathy MVP even mean? The flaws of the MVP and its criticisms are nothing new. Things like voter fatigue, narratives, and recency bias are all words that are thrown around when discussing this 2023 award. Where do these terms originate from, and how have past MVP races been influenced by them? Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid are no strangers to competing against each other for the MVP award. So how did Jokic win the first two MVPs, while Embiid snatched the third? The fan-made rivalry between these two giants started gaining steam in the fall of 2020. Embiid was coming off of a disappointing 2019-20 campaign, while Jokic had just led his squad to the Western Conference Finals. The question of who was better between these two went from a relaxed debate between just Sixers and Nuggets fans, to a heated war of words among all fans. People were getting tired of endlessly talking about Jordan vs LeBron. It was time to discuss the new kids on the block. Once the 2020-21 season arrived and both Embiid and Jokic took a massive leap in their games, these fiery discourses continued to ravage NBA Twitter. If you just glanced at the voting results, Joker won the 2021 MVP in a landslide. However, if you look into the timeline, there were many moments throughout this race where Jokic looked overmatched. Midway through the 2020-21 season, the top of the MVP leaderboard featured none other than the process himself. He was having a career year, averaging 28-10, and 10, and being the anchor to the number one seeded Sixers. On the other hand, Jokic was having a spectacular year too, finally achieving the recognition his fanbase had been desiring. However, the Nuggets were just a handful of games above 500, and didn't have the hype and excitement that Philly did. What you'll soon discover is that if you want to win the MVP, you don't just need the stats, you need the storyline. Two and a half months into the season on March 9th, 2021, Joel Embiid was the betting favorite for MVP, with LeBron James trailing him. Jokic was great, but he was seen as an afterthought compared to the top two. The common belief at this time was that it was Embiid's accolade to lose. If things had ended here, Embiid would have almost certainly taken the award with his team record in elite two-way play. Congrats, Joel. You're now on your way to a controversy-free MVP. Nothing can stop you now. Oh, man. On March 12th, 2021, Embiid suffered a brutal-looking hyperextension on a dunk attempt. This injury would sideline him for two and a half weeks, shattering his MVP case. He ended up missing 10 games, which may not seem like much on paper, but in reality, this season was already shortened to 72 games.
Joel finish with just 51 games played out of 72. Had he won the award, it would have been the second least amount of games played by any MVP ever. By the time he returned from injury on April 3rd, most fans had forgotten he was ever number one to begin with. A shiny new toy had been placed in front of them, that being Nikola Jokic. Joker had built a phenomenal case for the award while Embiid was in street clothes. After starting out 21 and 15, the Nuggets went on a tear, winning 26 of 36 to close out the season as the third seed. What bolstered Jokic's case was how Denver performed following a heartbreaking ACL injury to Jamal Murray. When Murray went down, many proclaimed Denver's season as being dead in the water. Instead, Jokic stepped up, averaging 27, 11, and 7 in the next 18 games without him, with Denver going 13 and 5. What was even more impressive was the fact that Joker played all 72 games this year. Jokic had leaped LeBron and Embiid, both who had suffered lower body injuries. In a season headlined by non-stop health and safety protocol issues and load management, Jokic was just one of a handful who suited up to hoop every night. Call it the perfect attendance award MVP all you want, but the reality is, staying healthy is one of the most valuable assets a player can have. On June 8, 2021, history was made, as Nikola Jokic became the lowest picked player in the draft to ever win the MVP. It was an incredible achievement, and a testament to how far Joker had come as a player. He finished the year averaging 26, 11, and 8, going 47 and 25. Voters gave 91 first place votes to Jokic, marking for a landslide victory. For the most part, fans were in agreement that this was the correct choice. However, some groups of people were left irritated at how this all played out. Accusations of voter fatigue affecting Giannis Antetokounmpo of the Bucks were thrown to the league. Voter fatigue is the theory that players who have won an MVP or two in the past are less likely to win it again because voters favor newer candidates. So do these claims hold any weight? The Greek freak was coming off of two straight MVP awards. In the 2020-21 season, he was eyeing his third straight and had quite the case. He averaged more assists per game, steals per game, blocks per game, and shot better from the field and from three than in his MVP season the year before. His team's record was no slouch either. The Bucks finished third in the East. One would think immediately that these numbers, along with his top-notch defensive ability and win total would make him a finalist. But no, Steph Curry finished as a finalist over him. Bucks fans absolutely believe that this was a case of voter fatigue. Well, why didn't Giannis finish as a finalist? Voter fatigue allegations aside, a key factor for why Giannis wasn't more highly regarded in this race was because of his past playoff shortcomings. Just one year prior in the 2020 playoffs, the Miami Heat had shockingly upset the Bucks in round two. Giannis played poorly for his standards, and the Bucks were the laughingstock of social media. Reminder, at this point in the 2020-21 season, Giannis had zero rings. He had a questionable postseason history filled with disappointment. Many fans saw his regular season campaign and thought, oh, that's cool. Anyways, get a ring, you loser. Voters and NBA media members were tired of all his MVP talk and wanted to see Giannis have a signature playoff run. The Greek freak had some narratives weighed against him, and that combined with Steph Curry's ridiculous numbers eliminated Giannis from being an MVP finalist. Some chalk this up as a concrete example of voter fatigue and slanderous narratives from the media, while others say Steph was just better. But this wouldn't be the last time a player's lack of postseason success would affect their MVP case. Either way, Nikola Jokic was the deserving winner of the 2020-21 MVP. This was easily the least controversial race of the three, but this was just the beginning of the most competitive and toxic three-year stretch of MVP debates ever. The 2021-22 season saw Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid enter with vastly different noise surrounding them and their teams. Jokic had just gotten swept in round two by the Phoenix Suns. It was no fault of his own, he had quite the stellar series. The problem was that his co-star Jamal Murray was set to miss the entire upcoming season due to his ACL tear. His other star teammate, Michael Porter Jr., played the first nine games of this season only to be ruled out for the remainder of 21-22 due to a back injury. On the other hand, Joel Embiid and the Sixers had no injuries, but they did have something just as unfortunate. Drama. 
Joel Embiid's co-star, Ben Simmons, refused to play another game for the team due to personal reasons. Embiid was left all by himself as a result. Both superstars had heavy tasks on hand to put their teams on their shoulders and carry them to wins. When judging who the MVP is, it isn't as simple as just looking at the stat sheet and team record. Voters very heavily weigh the idea of a narrative, which is the storyline that goes along with winning the award. How much of a factor does the narrative play on the eventual MVP winner though? And are there any examples of this affecting the race? At the end of the day, everything is subjective. But two examples that stick out are 2011 and 2017. In 2011, Derrick Rose won, and in 2017, Russell Westbrook won. Back in 2011, LeBron James had just made his infamous decision to join the Miami Heat. He formed what was considered to be one of the greatest teams ever. In retrospect, they were phenomenal, but not some unstoppable beast that would win seven titles like LeBron initially said. When the Bulls finished the 2010-11 season with a better record than the team everyone was expecting to steamroll the league, that gave D. Rose a pat on the back in the subsequent votes. It was a narrative that played in his favor. He won more games than the God Squad. In 2017, Russell Westbrook had a remarkable season that saw him become the first player to average a triple-double in over 50 years. On top of this, he was single-handedly leading a depleted Thunder team to the sixth seed. Their best player, Kevin Durant, had shockingly left the summer prior, leaving Westbrook all by himself. Instead of Russ requesting a trade and leaving the Thunder to rot, he stuck with his squad and put on a show. This is also another example of a narrative that assisted Westbrook in his MVP case. His competitors, like James Harden, didn't have such a strong storyline to back up their numbers. Narratives aren't inherently bad things, and players shouldn't be hated on because a good storyline helped their case. It's important to highlight them though, because a strong narrative can be the difference between second place or king of the world. In the 2021-22 season, both Jokic and Embiid had strong narratives along their side that would assist their MVP case. Another factor in the MVP race that has not been discussed is the concept of recency bias. In this context, recency bias relates to fans and the media letting a player's last 10% of the season overshadow what they did in the previous 90%. If you want to win the MVP, then you have to finish the season strong. Joel Embiid found this out the hard way. In early February of 2022, he was the betting favorite to win the award. By the end of the season, he found himself at a familiar spot, second place. What happened? In the 2021-22 season, Embiid made a strong case early on for the award. In December and January, he averaged 29 and 34 points per game. On top of this, Philly was winning. Their record in early January was several games above 500, as opposed to the Denver Nuggets whose win total was less impressive. Speaking of Denver, Jokic had kept the Nuggets afloat with their second and third best players injured. Joker was a monster, averaging 26 points, 14 rebounds, and 8 assists in the first three months of the season. He was sitting on top of the MVP leaderboard, but once early February rolled around, Embiid snatched the top spot away from him. NBA media members were split on who to pick but many lean towards Embiid for his superior team record, his defense, and the fact that he was doing it with his second best player sitting out. Many believe that once Embiid took first place, it would be a permanent grasp. After all, the only thing that could stop him was an injury, right? Yet, fast forward three months, and Nikola Jokic was the king of the world. So what happened? How did Joel Embiid lose the award again? And what did Nikola Jokic do to capture his second straight? On February 4th, 2022, Joel Embiid officially overtook Nikola Jokic for the top spot on the MVP ladder. On this date, the Nuggets stood at 28 and 24, while the Sixers were 31 and 21. This was following a five-game Sixers win streak to go along with a three-game Nuggets losing streak. A key moment that impacted this race was the Sixers acquisition of James Harden on February 10th. The Sixers traded for a star in the beard. What this move did as it pertains to the MVP race affected the narratives and expectations surrounding Joel Embiid. First off, getting Harden now made the Sixers season a championship or bust. No longer were they an undermanned team missing their second best player. Now, they needed to play like a championship contender, 
and had zero excuse to not perform like one. This also ended a narrative that was helping Embiid's MVP case. Ben Simmons was gone. All the memories of Embiid lifting the Sixers in the 58 games without Simmons were forgotten. Had Simmons stayed on the team and continued sitting out for the remainder of the season, the NBA media would have absolutely used it to uplift Embiid's case. But now since he had James Harden on his side, the narrative of Embiid having no help was dead. As mentioned before, the later part of the season, particularly post-All-Star break, is the make it or break it stretch for the MVP. Philly went 16-8 in this period, while Denver went 15-9. This was where Jokic jumped to number one. While on paper, one would just shrug their shoulders at these two records and say, what's the big deal? But the reality is, is that Denver exceeded their expectations, while Philly failed to meet theirs. Most casual fans and voters formed their opinion on a player from a select few nationally televised games, and Joel Embiid either found himself losing or being outdueled in these heavily anticipated matchups. Two games that negatively impacted Joel Embiid's case came against Brooklyn and Milwaukee in March of 2022. Embiid first played the Nets on March 10th, where he got destroyed by Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving at home. Fans across the globe tuned into this matchup, with much of the attention stemming from the return of Ben Simmons to Philly. This could have been Embiid's chance to show the world why he deserved to be the MVP, but instead, his team lost by nearly 30 points as he shot just 5 of 17 from the floor. Against fellow MVP candidate Giannis Antetokounmpo on March 29th, Embiid was thoroughly outplayed by the Greek Freak, even having his game-winning layup attempt smacked against the backboard by Giannis. Once again, it was yet another missed opportunity by Embiid to build his case up. Embiid outdueled Giannis in a 42-point performance one month prior on February 17th, but everyone had already forgotten about that. Giannis's 40-point game on March 29th was more valuable than Embiid's 42-point game on February 17th. Call it unfair or irrational, but the reality is that voters remember the more recent over the distant past. Jokic had lower expectations than Embiid due to his injured supporting cast, which is why all of his big games weren't held under a microscope like Embiid's. But the moment that swayed the MVP discussion in Joker's favor the most was easily the result of the head-to-head -head duel between Jokic and Embiid. In this March 14th battle of the bigs, the Denver Nuggets beat the Sixers in a close fight till the end. If you compare Jokic and Embiid's stat sheets, it's fair to say that one didn't vastly outperform the other. So why did this game help Jokic while hurting Embiid? The reasoning is simple, Denver won. Wins matter in this league, it doesn't matter the context. All voters see is that Jokic beat Embiid. There wasn't another game between these two to weigh. Embiid missed their first scheduled matchup in November due to being in the health and safety protocols. Following the humiliating March 10th loss to the Brooklyn Nets, Embiid was back down to number two. In early April, following the Sixers' narrow loss to the Bucks, Embiid fell to number three below Giannis. The significance of head-to-head -head matchups must not be underestimated. Post All-Star break, Jokic turned up his game to another level, averaging 31 points per game, 14 rebounds, and 7 dimes. The Nuggets finished the season gracefully, while Philly was sputtering, dropping from his high as the second seed in early March to the fourth seed. Once the final MVP straw poll came out on March 29th, the race was wraps. In the NBA, the MVP straw poll is when all the voters submit who they are planning to select for the award. Jokic crushed Embiid, all but prematurely securing his second straight MVP. This race is a prime example of how important it is for an MVP candidate to finish the season strong. Recency bias reigned supreme. Following the announcement, Embiid, the runner-up, congratulated Jokic, but claimed he didn't know what he had to do to win the MVP. He felt like the media hated him. Supporters of him agreed, while his adversaries laughed in his face. Nikola Jokic said few words, accepting his trophy in his hometown Serbia. Surely this would be the end of the Jokic and Bead MVP debates. It was already rare enough that the same two players duked it out for the trophy two years in a row. No way they'd do it again, right? Oh my god, can the scriptwriters come up with anything new? 
All that discussion of the past leads us to the present. The 2022-23 MVP race was the most intensely debated race of the three. Immediately, one factor that came into play by default was voter fatigue. Only three players in NBA history have won three straight MVPs in a row. Was Jokic going to be the fourth? Is the theory true that a player's chances lessen if they won one or two straight MVPs the season before? Someone who experienced voter fatigue after winning just one MVP was James Harden. In June 2018, James Harden capped off his remarkable 2017-18 campaign with his first ever MVP award. It was long overdue to most of his fans. Many of them felt strongly that Harden deserved the prior 2016-17 MVP that went to Russell Westbrook. In October 2018, before the upcoming season, ESPN writer Zach Lowe said that a James Harden repeat of the MVP seemed weirdly improbable. Lowe wondered why Harden wasn't the favorite, and pointed out that many voters only gave Harden the 2018 MVP as some sort of a shrug. Lowe implied that the voters didn't like watching Harden play, and voted for him in 2018 because they felt bad he lost out on the 2016-17 MVP. Essentially, what Zach Lowe proposed here is that the voters for the MVP had ruled out James Harden for the award before the 2018-19 season had even begun. Despite having won the accolade the prior year, he wasn't even close to the favorite to repeat. This was extremely odd, especially considering that there were few signs that Harden's game was slowing down. Harden ended up being beaten by Giannis Antetokounmpo for the 2019 MVP, in a close battle that could have gone either way. This paragraph looks like damning evidence that voter fatigue played a role in Harden's 2019 MVP campaign. Harden experienced voter fatigue in his attempt to win two straight MVPs. So what about three straight? Fast forward to 2023. Following Embiid's second round flameout to Boston and Jokic's championship, the NBA world had more tinfoil hats on than ever. Embiid's MVP was called a pity award and a sympathy MVP by fans across the globe. So how accurate is this assessment? Did Jokic deserve it? And did he experience the dreaded voter fatigue? Similarly to past years, Jokic had a great start to the season while Embiid opened up sluggish. The moment that catapulted Embiid's MVP case into mainstream status was his 47-point bomb in January. Against Jokic in their head-to-head, -head, Embiid destroyed him and got the W. The cherry on top was Embiid hitting Jokic with a dagger step-back three. It's as if Sixers fans had written the script for this game. It went perfectly for Embiid. Before this matchup, Embiid's MVP case was barely talked about. Afterwards, it was all the rage on social media. Spectators soon realized that for the third straight year, they'd be subjected to nonstop bickering between these two fan bases. Shifting to off the court, sports media members that you see on TV like Stephen A. Smith, Kendrick Perkins, and Skip Bayless all hold immense amounts of power. Their voices echo throughout the NBA community and often influence sports writers who have MVP votes one way or the other. Sixers fans and Embiid fans alike spend a ton of energy promoting and advertising Embiid's achievements on social media. Whether it was persistent haters posting Jokic lowlights, or Embiid's personal trainer publicly dissing Jokic on Twitter, Embiid supporters show no mercy. In their minds, the last two years, more specifically 2022, were a sham. But seriously, how could some murmuring on social media possibly affect an MVP case? Usually it wouldn't, but once Denver started struggling in early March of 2023, the tide began turning. The Nuggets went on a four-game losing streak, and one aspect of Joker's game that was put on blast was his defense. Suddenly, fans from all walks of the league came out of the woodwork to criticize Jokic's mediocre interior defense. His defensive lowlights were uploaded to Twitter and Reddit, and received hundreds of thousands of views. On top of this, Joel Embiid turned up his game to another level, breaking scoring records and hitting game winners like it was nothing. While Jokic was falling, Embiid was rising. Remember, the last month or two of a season post-All-Star break determines who the MVP is. A strong end to the season helped Jokic in 2022, 
but now his less than stellar finish in 2023 was hurting him. A narrative was starting to form surrounding these two, it being that Joel Embiid deserved at least one MVP from this three-year stretch, and Nikola Jokic didn't deserve to be in the esteemed three-straight MVP group due to his lack of playoff success. It's really tough to vote a guy who hasn't even been to the finals as MVP for the third straight year, given the historic, you know, implications of such a vote. If you think this last point sounded eerily similar to what was being said about Giannis back in 2021, you'd be correct. One could argue that voter fatigue, recency bias, narratives, and of course Embiid's strong play all had to do with Jokic losing out on his third straight MVP. Going back to media talking heads on shows like First Take or Uninterrupted, Jokic was public enemy number one. Embiid was the king, and had successfully swayed the public opinion in his favor. This all happened in the matter of just two weeks. The icing on the cake to this madness was Kendrick Perkins coming out and implying that there was a racial bias when it came to MVP voting, essentially saying that Jokic was going to win his third straight MVP because he's white. Perkins received heavy backlash for this comment, and many point to this moment as a prime example of how toxic this whole debate has become. According to Nuggets head coach Michael Malone, Jokic was turned off by the quote-unquote ugly MVP conversations. There was no opportunity for these two bigs to meet again on the floor. In their last scheduled matchup in late March, Embiid sat out due to a calf injury. He was lampooned for this decision, but it ended up working out in his favor. Had he played and gotten outdueled, it's possible that Jokic would have gained the momentum needed to win the award. On top of this, Embiid made comments just a few days prior, sneakily dissing Jokic and critiquing the MVP process. He questioned why Jokic won the MVP in 2022 as the sixth seed. On paper, JoJo has a point, but in reality, Denver won just three less games than the fourth seeded Sixers did. Embiid also took shots at Jokic's defense, saying that the analytics that claim he's one of the best defenders don't make sense at all. Embiid here is referring to the advanced stat called Raptor, which ranked Jokic as the fourth best defender in the league. That wasn't all. Embiid also questioned why he had the most pressure to win a title, while Jokic, the two-time MVP, hadn't won anything either. Of course, he didn't actually say Jokic's name, but it doesn't take a genius to realize who he's talking about. It's clear that JoJo was not fond of the criteria used by MVP voters. To sit out after saying this though, yeah, it was like throwing gasoline onto the fire. Luckily for Embiid though, NBA fans have the memory of a goldfish, and this moment was soon forgotten. Jokic started sitting out games as the season concluded, while Embiid played and dominated. The icing on the cake was a 52-point explosion against the Celtics at home, which all but confirmed what many believed. The MVP was Embiid's, which he indeed won. A winner who stands as one of the most controversial picks for the award ever. If a fan wants to argue that Embiid's 2023 MVP was assisted by voter fatigue and narratives, then that's perfectly legitimate. But there's countless MVPs in NBA history that have been influenced by the same aspects. Whether it's the 2011 Derrick Rose MVP benefiting from the narrative that the Bulls won more games than the Super Team Heat, or James Harden in 2019 being ruled out as a favorite by many voters before the season began due to him already winning an MVP the previous year, or even Giannis in 2021 being excluded from being an MVP finalist due to voter fatigue. All of this is nothing new. Joel Embiid benefited from voter fatigue directed towards Nikola Jokic, but that shouldn't be used to diminish the great regular season he had. Jokic all but bowed out from the award by choice, missing five out of the last seven games of the regular season to rest. Anyone who glosses over this fact is falling victim to recency bias. They are letting Jokic's championship and Embiid's choke rewrite regular season history. Jokic prioritized resting in preparation for the playoffs over the MVP chase, which gave all the momentum to the process. Speaking of the regular season, what so many seem to forget is that this is a regular season award. Those who voted Embiid for MVP were called out after Jokic's championship, as if this fantastic run should have any bearing on the voting process. 
Embiid choking in the second round doesn't make his MVP undeserving, because the MVP doesn't count postseason play. Jokic has a myriad of reasons for why he deserved the award, but him winning a championship is not one of them. No matter which side you're on, what should be agreed upon unanimously is that the debates surrounding this topic, especially in the last three years, have been extremely toxic. With such a highly coveted award only given out to one special player each year, someone will always be left feeling wronged. And with the continuing rise of social media, this bickering won't be going anywhere. It's only just arrived. In due time, if this continues, the aura and mystique surrounding the MVP award itself may start to deteriorate. Kevin Durant said the same thing himself. The MVP is being talked about too much. The mystique of being an MVP has got, like, it's not what it once was. It's like, we talk about it too much, simply put. Maybe it's something about these two players that gets everyone going. Well, it's a good thing they both now have what they want. Embiid has his MVP, and Jokic has his championship. It's perfectly balanced. The Embiid-Jokic drama can finally rest. Because there's no way we're getting a part 4 of this, right? Wait, you're telling me they're just entering their primes? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs>